Good morning everyone and welcome to another baking vlog with me. Stop it cats please. Stop it. They're fighting all the time. Either way, as I was saying, welcome to another baking vlog and Sunday again. So that means we're gonna bake and today we're gonna make limoncello and blueberry scones again i got the recipe from another delicious magazine this is may 2019 and i've seen a lot of people making scone di scones these days so i thought i'll give it a go as well just like a slightly jazzed up recipe not to have those sort of plain old scones nothing wrong with them they actually taste great but i thought i'd try something different again i've never really made this particular recipe before so we'll see how it goes. I need to tie my hair back because otherwise I can't concentrate on baking. Excellent. I need to put my apron on as well. Right, so before I start, I've turned on the oven that I need to preheat to 200 degrees fan or 220 if you're using static. And I'm gonna use my K-Mix again like I did last week because it's just the easiest way to do things. Now we're gonna weigh out the flour. Uh, we're using self-raising flour and we're using 225 grams. I should probably say this makes enough scones for eight people. This should make about eight scones. Then we need to add the finely grated zest of one lemon. So we add a little pinch of salt to help with the rising and then we need to add the butter and we need 50 grams of unsalted butter. Make some space here, advance my trusty K-Mix, ta-da, there we go. And we want to mix it until it resembles some coarse breadcrumbs. But as you can see now, it's about right. And at this stage, we add two tablespoons of white caster sugar. And then we've got here 110 milliliters of whole milk that we're also gonna add in to bring the pastry together. And that's it really, that's pretty much how you make scones. The pastry is done, the dough, I guess it's more of a dough, is done now. K-Mix attachment can come off. Use the K-Whisk for this, not the dough hook, because this is better for incorporating butter into flour. And this has to be a little bit of a sticky, slightly wet, but very soft dough. This is what it should look like once we're done with the mixer. And obviously you can do this by hand, you just have to rub the butter and the flour together, but it works perfectly well by hand as well. So we get the dough and what we want to do is that we put in a lightly flour surface and we're going to knead it by hand a couple of times just to make it a little less sticky and a little smoother and then we're going to roll it out flour on the rolling pin and we roll it out to about two and a half centimeters thickness so that's about it really and then we get a pastry cutter of about five centimeters in diameter and we start cutting actually if you want to put some flour on it before it gets stuck all over the pastry and we start cutting right so just to show you so i've got the first batch here ready to go in the oven that we've preheated it's going between 12 and 15 minutes keep a keep an eye on them um because as soon as they go golden you want to get them out so we're getting this out of the oven they are not as fluffy as I would like them to be. They're, they're risen, but not as, as tall as I would like them. I, I think the main issue here, hang on, let me turn around so I can face you. As I was saying, I think the main issue here, the reason why they're not super tall, it's not so much the recipe, but it's because I've rolled out the dough a little bit too thin. So I was meant to get about eight scones out of this and I got 11. Um, so I think that's why, but I think they're going to be fine and they're going to be fluffy. They're just, I should have not rolled this out this thin. We're going to make the cream that goes in them and going to try them because they're probably still going to taste great, even though it was a slight fail. But before I start with the cream, I think I'm going to go and do some exercise because then I feel like I will have deserved eating a shit ton of scones. Right, I'll see you later and I'll show you how to make the cream. Right, so the scones have cooled down now. Went for a walk, did some exercise. 
feel better. Now we need to do the next step, which is whipping up the cream with the limoncello that is gonna go into the scones. Right, so we need 300 milliliters of extra thick double cream. Make sure it's extra thick or you use whipping cream or something like that because you want the, the cream that goes in the scone to be quite thick and consistent. This is what it looks like compared to normal double cream, just to give you an idea. So we're going to put this in the K mix. As you can see, it's really, don't know if you can see it coming down here. It is really quite a bit thicker than normal double cream and it's worth using this type of cream for this recipe because it's going to give you a much more solid, more clotted cream like type of texture than simple double cream. And then we're going to add two tablespoons of limoncello or a little bit more in case you're feeling particularly boozy. One. Two. Then I'm going to use the balloon whisk attachment and give you a whisk. Because it's quite a lot thicker than normal double cream, it takes a little while longer to actually get to the soft peak stage, which is where we want it to be. This is perhaps slightly over whisk. I could have stopped for maybe like 30 seconds before we reached this stage, but now the damage is done and it's still gonna be okay. Now at this stage, we're gonna add a couple of tablespoons of lemon curd. Try to get as good quality lemon curd as you can. You can also make it at home, it's really quite easy to make. Um, I just decided to make this recipe quite last minute, so I didn't have any or could not really be bothered to make any. We're just going to ripple it through. Make sure that when you try to mix this through, you go from the bottom to the top so that you don't undo all the work that you've done by whisking the cream. So if you go this way and quite gently, then you don't beat the air out of this. So we've got the cream here some blueberries there and then we're going to take our scones and we can cut them in half like so and then i'm just going to use a knife and put as much cream as i like in them and then a few blueberries and then top with the other side and this is what you get Ooh, sorry this is what you get which looks quite nice you can also pipe it in if you like but um i don't know this is quite meant to be rather homemade Right, so I've finished baking them and they look okay, but it's not the prettiest thing I've ever baked. So I'm going to try it and see before I get my boyfriend to try it. Right, despite the looks being a little bit messy, they actually really taste great. It's actually really worth a try this recipe, it tastes great. You probably managed to make them look a little bit prettier than I have. I've kind of failed with that. Top tips would be to not roll out the dough as thinly as I did and leave it a little bit thicker. And then potentially to work the cream a little bit less than I did because I think I overworked it slightly. But it's still all right. It's not super sweet, so you could consider adding a little bit of powdered sugar to the cream when you whisk it. But you know, you might not like incredibly sweet sweets. I took inspiration for this recipe from Delicious Magazine, which I would highly recommend trying out. And please subscribe, give this video a thumbs up. And if you like content like this, then I'm going to make more videos. Bye.